Every head is bowed down. Every eye closed. Father in heaven, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for today, Lord God. You have preserved all of us, Father God, to serve you until today, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We pray that you will bless your word, Father God, and no one will leave this place empty-handed, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Father, I pray that you plow every heart, Father God. You plow every soil of our hearts, Father to be transformed in the image and the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you said in your song, it's not over I, but it's Christ that's living in me. And Father, we follow you. We will follow you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for being, for having a privilege, Lord God, to serve you today and to be in, in, in the front of you today, Father. Cover your servant by your mighty blood and your covering of, of, of your a mighty hand, Father God. And let your word flow. Let your word be uh, let your word flow on the congregation, Father God, and let your word uh, bless every heart, Father God. And each spiritual gift, Father, that you have today. Put the names of everyone that are in here, yes, uh, in this place, Father God. Yes, we thank you, Lord, and we thank you. Take charge today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo. I, I thank the Lord for our anniversary, for the victory of the anniversary. If, it, if, if God didn't come before us, we can do that. We cannot do that. Amen. Give up that offer. For every one of us that committed themselves for the victory of that uh, celebration for the faithfulness of the Lord into the UCF. Amen. Amen. I, I've done this by the grace of God, I think, three years ago. And I said, Lord, let your word be done in this place. Amen. So, I will tell you that later, but uh, our our uh, theme of the anniversary is declaring His glory to the nations. Amen. How can we declare His glory to the nation if we ourselves, our lives are not transformed, are not revealed, if our lives are ruined? Amen. What testimony can we give to the people? So God has has a, has a plan in each and every one of us to rebuild His temple. This temple, you are the temple of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do you agree with that? The Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Lord wants to rebuild His temple so that you could be the testimony of His redeeming blood. Amen. Your changed lives. Because how can you go and disciples all nations if we ourselves are not rebuilt, if we ourselves are not transformed, if we ourselves is no longer I but Christ living in me, this is the Lord's project in us, in every one of us. Amen. Amen. So the topic that the Lord has for us today is God's demand, rebuild my temple. Amen. It's a command to each and every one of us. It's a, a demand of the most high God. Rebuild my temple. Every one of us has a broken heart, ruined lives. You know, every one of us has his issue, has her, her issues in life. But God's demand today, commanding you, rebuild the temple. Rebuild that ruins your past forget about all of that continue in being no longer I no longer I but Christ let Christ be king be the king of your hearts amen, amen. so we will go on to the book of Haggai if you have your Bible please turn your your Bible to the book of Haggai I will I will uh, discuss with you uh, chapter 1 and 2 but 1 is my main point here and uh, chapter 2 is the prophecy for this church because when I read the Bible it's I read it like it's personally for me and for the church so if you will bear with me I know you can relate on what's happening in this church it is on Haggai chapter 1 and chapter 2 Amen. So let us all read. I have here with me the Message Bible version 
but you can read it from here but I just want my version because it's light the, the message Bible version version so verse 1 on the first day of the sixth month of the second year etc etc God's message was delivered by prophet Haggai so if we will make it personal on the February 23, 2018. Amen. God's message was delivered to the, to the governor, meaning to the leadership of Judah, son of, a, son of this one, and to the high priest. It's difficult the name. I don't want to pronounce it. Verse 2, a message from God of the angel armies in other version uh, a message from the God of hosts amen the people procrastin procrastinate they say this isn't the right time to rebuild my temple the temple of God so we say this is not the right time to rebuild the temple of God which is this me myself and I we said, we think that this is not the right time. Shortly after that, God said more to Haggai, spoke it. How is it that it's not that it's the right time for you to live in your fine new homes while the home, God's temple, is in ruins? And then a little later, the God of hosts, the God of angel armies, of the angel army spoke out again. Take a good, hard look at your life. I want you to, to uh, take this message personally for you. Personally for you. Because as the Lord uh, uh, speak to me about this word personally, I know you can relate with this. Okay? Take a good, hard look at your life. Think it over. See, it's, it's just a letter. The Message Bible, I like it so much because it's like a letter to me. Amen? You have spent a lot of money. You have, you, but you haven't much to show for it. You keep filling your, filling your plates, but you never get filled up. You, you keep drinking and drinking and drinking, but you're always thirsty. You put on layer after layer of clothes, but you can't, can, can't get warm. And the people who work for you, what are they getting out of it? Not much. A leaky, rusted out bucket, that's what. That's why God of the angel army said, take a good, hard look at your life. Think, think it over. Then God said, here's what I want you to do. There's a command over there. Here's what I want you to do. Climb into the hills and cut some timber. Do you know timber? Timber is a long, hard tree to, to, to make house, to build houses. It's a wood to build house. Bring it down and reveal the temple. Do it just for me. The Lord said, do it just for me. Honor me. You've had a great ambitions for yourselves, but nothing has come of it. The little you have brought to my temple, I've blown away. There was nothing to it. And why? This is the message of the guard of the armies. Remember, because while you've run around, while you've run around, caught up with taking care of your own houses, my home is in ruins. So while we are taking care of our own, the house, the temple of God is ruined. That's why, because of your stinginess, why God would call us stingy? Because of your stinginess, and so I've given you a dry summer and a skimpy crop. I've matched your tight-fisted stinginess by decreeing a season of drought, drying up fields and hills, withering gardens and orchards, stunting vegetables and fruits. Nothing, not man or woman, not animal or crop is going to thrive. Then the governor, Zerubbabel, son of 
Shealitiel, and the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak, Jehozadak, and all the people with them listened. Meaning the leadership and the people listened, really listened to the voice of their God. Amen. When God sent the prophet Haggai to them, they paid attention to him. In listening to Haggai, they honored God. Then Haggai, God's messenger, preached God's message to the people, I am with you. The Lord said, I am with you. This is how God got Zerubbabel, Joshua, and all the people moving. Got them working on the temple of God of the armies, the age of armies. Then this happened on the 23rd of February, 2018. Okay. The, the, the chapter 2, I will read it later because it's a prophecy. So the Lord has three things for us today. Three things. Number one, the people say it is not yet the right time to build the Lord's temple. Second, the Lord is saying, think about what's happening. And thirdly, the Lord is telling us, think about what you are doing. The first thing that the Lord wants to talk about to us is we say and we think it is not yet the right time to rebuild His temple. His temple, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are, we are His church. Amen. So the Lord wants to rebuild the temple and we say, it's not yet the right time. What does the Lord mean? You said, Lord, I'm not ready to be used. But when, but when we talk about, when, when the Lord is talking about you, the Lord wanted to use you, you have so much reason. You have so much delay. <coughs> You, you still want to go in, in, in your old ways, in your own style, in your, in your own thinking. The, the, the Bible says, uh, you did what is right on your own sight. Amen. So when the Lord wanted to reveal your life and His testimony through you, you are not yet ready. I don't know who am I talking about here, but the Lord... It's clearly saying, the people say and think, it is not the right time to rebuild my temple. But this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day of salvation. And this is the day that the Lord wants to use you. Amen. Amen. But when we talk about business, when we talk about marriage, relationships, our comfort zones, our hobbies, the things we want to do, the people we need to meet, we are always ready to go. We don't want to waste time. Amen. If we have date, we are ready to go. We don't want to waste time. But when there is prayer, when there is discipleship, when there are training, <coughs> I, I have later, I have something to do later. I have business to do, I have friends to meet. Amen. Even me, the Lord first rebuked me about this. <clears throat> Amen. But the temple of God, you are the temple of God, and we are still unstable to be used. We are saying we are not ready. That's what we are saying. Amen. We are not ready. We think about so much things and forget and forget to find ourselves, forget to build ourselves, forget to feed ourselves of the Word of God. We, we are so busy in many other things. But in feeding ourselves, building ourselves, 
for the glory of God. We have so much reason for that. Amen. Uh, when I was uh, in 2014, I think 2013, when the ACM started before UCF, uh, Sister Ernalyn is our song leader before. <clears throat> so we are we are the back her backup singers, and she told me I was first time first. Uh, I attended the second time I think, and they are using us as a backup singer and. They are as uh, pre they are presenting the baptism, and she told me, "When do you want to be baptized?" I said, "I'm not ready." <laughs> I said, "I'm not yet ready," and she said, "When are you going to be ready so that the Lord can use you mightily?" Amen. Because baptism is one of the English is one of the righteous requirement, one of the declaration that you died with your own self. Being inside the water is dying with your own self, declaring that you died with Jesus and you were washed away. All your sins were washed away. So when you were when somebody is baptizing you, don't raise any part of your body because it will not be baptized. It's just a joke, amen. But it's a declaration that I died with Christ and I rose again with Christ being a new creation. I left my, I, my old nature has passed away. And behold, I am a new creation. Everything is new. Amen. And then I told her, I'm not ready. But when I told her I'm not ready, when the baptism came, I got, got baptized. Amen. It's not, it's, I just don't want to say it, but my heart is ready in that time. But my, my, everything in my being don't want to do it. Amen. There is a fight inside of me. Amen. So we think that's, that's the uh, war place of the enemy and you, your mind. So he will put things in your mind. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But your heart and your spirit is ready. Amen. So that's why the Lord, the word of the Lord here is the people think and the people say what you think and what you say is not what you is not what the Lord's plan for you. Amen. Okay, second. And then a little later, the God of the angel army spoke out again. You remember the second thing is, think about what is happening. What is happening around you? Think about that. The Lord said, take a good hard look at your life. Think it over. Or in other translation, think about what is happening. You have spent a lot of money, etc., etc. You have done all of that. You have much to show. Keep uh, fine filling your plates. And you are not contented in what's happening. Because that's what, not your plan. So we are not contented of the results of everything that we plan. Amen. So, if there is something in our lives that keeps on happening, keeps on repeating and repeating and repeating, it means the Lord is teaching us something and we're not getting it yet. That's why it keeps on repeating. The Lord is makulit. The Lord will keep on repeating it until you get it. As I told you before, you will not fail on the test of the Lord. He will just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Okay? So if, if there's issues in your life that's keep on happening, we, we haven't get the message yet. That's the message of that. <clears throat> because we, we don't want to listen. Most of the reason is we don't want to listen and we follow our own interests, our own conveniences, those temporal enjoyments before carrying on God's work in the community. If we want 
to experience the real enjoyment of temporal things, we should make God our friend. I am a friend of God. We should make God our friend by putting His interest first. God's demand is you putting Him on the number one list. Otherwise, all that which we gain, all that which we accomplish, is just like we place it in a bag with too much holes. It will be blown away. If it's not for God, remember if it's not for God, it will just be blown away. It will just be in vain. If you have plans and God is not the number one in that plan, forget about it. You cannot get it. If you want a day off and you will not give God your day off, forget about it. Because that happens to me before. <laughs> Everything of this happens to me. I asked for a day off, uh, God gave it to me. I asked for a Thursday night prayer meeting, God gave it to me. And all the things that I prayed for, He gave it to me. How can I refuse on what He wants me to do? If everything that I wanted, the desires of our heart, seek ye first. <laughs> the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Uh, number three. Three, third point, third thing that the Lord wants us to think is think about what you are doing. What you are doing, what are you doing now for the Lord? Take a good hard look at your life, think it over, or think what you are doing. Then God said, here's what I want you to do. Climb into the hills and cut some timber, bring it down, and rebuild the temple. Do it just for me. Honor me. You, you had great ambitions of yourself, but nothing has come to it. The little you have brought to my temple, I've blown away. There was nothing. Meaning, if you offer something for the Lord, but you are half-hearted, forget about it. He will not take it. If he's not the number one in that offering, the number one motive of you in that offering is it not to thank God to bring what is his and to thank him for what he has given you, forget about all of those. It will just be blown away. And here, here is the beautiful verse here. And why? Because you run around caught up with taking care of your own houses, of your own conveniences, of your own plans. And you leave, you leave the house of the Lord ruined. Your life, you leave your life unfed by the word of God. You leave your life uh, not pleasing to the Lord. You leave your life in your own plans. You, the Lord says, we are caught up with taking care of our own houses. See, the Lord called us stingy. That's why, because you run around caught up with taking care of your own houses, my home is in ruins. That's why, because of your stinginess, I've so given you a dry summer. Have you experienced a dry Christian life? Because the Lord, when you take care of your own house first, of your own priorities first, and not His priority first, Everything, remember, everything will be just blown away. I remember uh, me and my family, my mom used to lay on a, on a pillow full of money. And she, she was caught up by pride and not mingling with people because she had so much money. And, then, and of course, us children also will have the same because we have everything. But the Lord take them all because it's not for Him. And it is not from Him. Amen. So the Lord will take all your conveniences, all your comfort zone, so that you will follow what His plans for you. Because His plans is better for you. His plan is good. His plan is for your success. His plan is for your uh, pros Amen. prosperity. Amen. Prosperity is not just being rich. Prosperity is being having peace with 
with all you have. Amen. Amen. Being contented. Yes. Amen. It, and it's being from the Lord. Yes. All of you, what we have is from the Lord. Amen. So don't be stingy. Even if you don't have money, give yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. Amen. 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 All the things that the Lord wants you to do, do it. Because when you do it, everything will follow. Amen. Uh, ano yung verse na to? You uh, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Just put Him in your first priority. Amen. Proverbs 19.21 Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Because of my house, which is waste, we run literally. That verse means uh, when, when he calls us, we run literally. Run. We run away. When he calls us, we run away. All the while, it, each to his own houses, we run to our own. To our own houses, meaning your own comfort zone, your, your own plans, your own uh, desires, which is not a uh, uh, partner, which is not partner with the with will of the Lord. Amen. So our Lord says, as I told you, Matthew 6.33, Again, I know you memorized it. Please, please recite it, Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all his shall be added unto you. Who will we seek first? The Lord. The Lord. Amen. And his righteousness. And what will follow? What in all we don't understand? All means all. 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 all means all. That's what I only understand. All. If I seek the Lord first, all of this, not only things. Amen. Not only things. It's all. Everything. Everything. What aspect of your life do you want to be blessed? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So this comes through those, uh, but we reverse it, sometimes we reverse it, we, we do it like this. Seek his own things first, <laughs> and God withholds his blessing. This is what's happening. Amen. <coughs> Amen. You're supposed to receive all that is for you. Amen. Yes, Lord. But the secret is this. That is for you. You have a right. You, have a, you are the friend of God. You are a child of God. You have all the right to receive all that you need and all that the Lord has prepared for you. What the Lord has prepared for you is more than what you prepare for yourself. Amen. 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 So this withholding of blessing only comes true to those who prefer who prefer their own. God's honor, more than God's honor, who do not thoroughly approve self-love, whose commitment and devotion are unstable, for on a slight temptation or small issues, they are overcome by those issues, and so that they are, these are the people who are bold, self-pleasing, wise, and great in their own eyes, who do not ground their conversation and on and their selves on true and solid humility. It's all about I, 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 me, 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 and myself. This is the devil. I, me, and myself. This is uh, uh, the plant, the sowing. The devil also sow things on our minds. But we need to watch it. We need to filter what is on our minds. Amen? So the devil said to Jesus, Worship me, bow down to me, and I, and I will give you all the riches in this world. This is the devil, I, me, and myself. 
to those who are slow to fulfill what is for the glory of God and the things of His house, the church is firmly becoming stagnant in their growth on their spiritual life. This is the reason why we are stagnant. Because their priority is not really God, but they are choked of the cares of their life. So neither heavenly dew come, which enrich hearts and minds. The anointing from heaven, the message from heaven will not come if we don't seek, if we fulfill only our, our desires, not the Lord's desire. Before, before the work of the Lord, we prioritize me, myself, and I. Now you know that all the blessings of course, comes from the blesser. Amen. 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 So I, I will give you two, uh, two uh, secret of exceeding, exceeding growth in your Christian walk. Two words that will give you exceeding growth in your Christian walk. Are you ready? This is very, very simple. <laughs> Amen. Verse one, have I one? Verse twelve, the governor. The, the high priest and all the people with them listened they really listened to the voice of their God Amen. when God sent prophet Haggai to them and paid attention to him in listening to Haggai they honored God so not only listening to God but listening to God to whom God sent Amen it's the number one uh, uh, word. It's the first word that will give us exceeding growth in our Christian life. It's hearing. Hearing. Hear. Hear what the Lord is telling you. Hear it. Hear it. Amen. And this is what the Lord is telling you today. Then he guide God's messenger, preach God's message to the people. The Lord says, I am with you. I am with you. Philippians 4.13, can you put it, brother? It says here, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We don't have a problem to, through Christ. Everything is in Christ, amen? Everything that we're supposed to have, that we need to have, that will strengthen us, is in true Christ. We don't have a problem with that. But our problem is, can I do it? Am I willing to do it? Or do you believe that you can do that? Do you believe that what the Lord has put on your hands, you can do it? Do you believe that? Amen. You have to believe that because the Word of God says, I can. I can. And it is only, you can only do that when you have the favor of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord says, I am with you. I am with you. Amen. 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 Do you receive that? Amen. I am with you. You can do everything that the Lord wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Second word, obey. When you hear that, the Lord said, I am with you. And the Lord says, I can, you can, you can do all things. This is the second word, obey. This is how God got Zerubbabel. Joshua and the people moving. Got them working at the temple. This happened on the 23rd day of February 2018. <coughs> Amen. So, it starts, not only it starts today, it's supposed to start long time ago. But we say we are not ready. Now, are you ready now to do the work of the Lord? Amen. 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 This one, I've, uh, I've uh, done this by the grace of God. The Lord gave me word. And it's so personal that I saw in His word what is happening in, in, in this, His church. Amen. Because when I read the Bible, I see it just like the Lord is talking to me face to face. And that's, I'm thinking about what's happening and what am I doing in that happening. Amen. Let's do, uh, let's read uh, Haggai, 
the uh, second verse, the uh, second chapter. I will read it on the Message Bible version. See, I made it so personal that I put the date today. Amen. Mm -hmm. February 23, 2018. The word of God came through Prophet Haggai. Tell the leadership, tell the people, is there anyone here who saw the temple the way it used to be? All glorious. And what do you see now? Not much, right? Not much. If you you are here from 2013, it is glorious before, right? But the Lord says here, is there anyone here who saw the temple the way it used to be? Well, how it is before? All glorious. And what do you see now? What do you see now? It's not much, right? This is the message Bible. I'm just reading it to you. So get to work. Put your name. You said to yourself, get to work. Earn a living. Get to work, Rotel. God is speaking. Get to work and put your name on it. It's so personal. Get to work. Get to work, Joshua. Get to work, Zerubbabel. Get to work, all you people. God is speaking. Yes, get to work for I am with you. For I am with you, the God of the angel of armies. Put into action the word I covenanted with you when you left Egypt. When the Lord delivered you from your past life, remember that covenant that you made to the Lord. Remember what you promised to the Lord. What are you now? And how the Lord changed you from before. And what do you promise God when He did that to you? What did you promise God? I'm living and breathing among you right now. Don't be timid. Don't hold back. This, this is what this is what the God of the angels of army said. Before you know it. I will shake up the sky and earth, oceans and fields. I'll, I'll shake down all the godless nations. I'll bring bushes and wealth. And I will fill this temple with splendor. God of the angel of armies say so. I own the silver. I own the gold. Decree the Lord of hosts. This temple, this is the prophecy right now. I pray, I, 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 I want you to receive this, this personally for you and for this congregation. Amen. This temple is going to end up far better than it started out. A glorious beginning but an even more glorious finish. A place in which I will hand out wholeness and holiness. Your life will be whole and you will be consecrated. You will be holy before the Holy, the holy God because He is holy. Your Father is holy and God will give you Amen. On the 23rd of February 2018, if someone carries a piece of sacred meat in his pocket, meat is set apart for a sacrifice on the altar, and the pocket touches a loaf of bread. A dish of stew, a bottle of wine or oil, or any other food, will these foods be made holy by such contact? If those offerings will be in in, uh, in in lighter work if those offerings that you have is contaminated will the Lord accept that if if you offer the Lord anything with whole with half-heartedness with you not God is your priority will he accept it no God said bring 
the tithes and the offering. And God says in somewhere in Matthew, before you bring anything else before me, you have to settle everything between you and your brother, you and your sister. Amen? And then I will accept your offering. Because if we don't do that, your offering is contaminated. And God will not accept dirty things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Then he said about, so that's the contaminated. Think about before you set out to lay the first foundation stones <coughs> for the rebuilding of my temple, how did it go with you? Is it true that your foot dragging or your foot is very heavy? Your half-hearted efforts at rebuilding the temple of God was reflected in a sluggish return on your crops, half the grain and you, you were used to getting, half the wine, meaning God gave us uh, God gave us much but we return we return half we return little God will not accept that God only will accept the whole of you not half never mind if it's quarter if it's half if it's three fourth no the Lord will not accept that the Lord wanted you whole as you are as you are I'm going to finish God's message the second uh, 23rd of February to the leadership I am about to shake up everything to turn everything upside down and start over from top to bottom overthrow governments destroy foreign powers dismantle the world of weapons and armaments throw these armies into confusion so that they end up killing up one another on that day this is God's message. I will take you. Put your name. The, the, the Lord says, I will take you and you have to put your name in it. I will take you. I will use my name, okay? And use your name also. I will take you, Rotel, as my personal servant and I will set you as a safe signatory and the sign of my sovereign presence and authority. I looked over the field and chosen you for this work. God is looking over the field and saw you and have chosen you for this work that the Lord has for you. So you have to hear it and you have to obey it if you want all these things. Amen. 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 I want you to stand up, every head's bowed down. I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, I call you in the name of Jesus that you will fill every heart's Father God. You will fill every empty space in the hearts of your people. You will bless them mightily and you will enable them to do everything that you want them to do. You will give them peace. You will give them wholeness. You will deliver them from bondages in the mighty name of Jesus. Father in heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone in this place, oh God, you will bless their hearts. You will empty their hearts by themselves, from themselves, Father, and you will fill their hearts. Father in heaven, 